Well, um, previously I has really had no idea what sickle cell was. Sickle cell disease basically is a blood disorder. Um, what happens for every one of us, our bone marrow uh, produces the red blood cells which last for about 120 days. But for people with sickle cell disease, when the red blood cells are produced, they last only for about 20 days and they become into a sickle shape. Uh, that's hence the name sickle cell. And when that happens, the sickle cells go into the blood vessels and they, they sort of constrict the blood, um, blood flow in the, in the body. And hence, a person has all sorts of infections leading from pain. Pain is the most common, but it also different um, infections that can come about because of that. The first years were hard. For the first five years, four to five years, I never really spoke about it. And for me, the healing process has been telling anybody who can give me their ears of what the condition is and to avoid uh, what happened to me. Um, so I feel if we had known from the beginning that we are at risk of um, our kids having the condition, we are going to be proactive, have our children tested. I'm a mom of, uh, of four and uh, when I was pregnant with my, my fourth baby, I was really sick. I was in hospital for about six weeks. I was at the King Edward's Hospital. They had no idea what was wrong with me. I know the doctors asked me um, if I had the sickle cell trait, which I actually said I did, but they didn't take a step further to test my husband if he had the trait as well, to know that maybe potentially our daughter was going to have the disease. So when our daughter was born, I remember the first symptoms were her having swollen fingers and swollen hands and uh, every time we went to the hospitals the doctors had no idea what was wrong and I would tell them about my story, how, how I was sick when I was pregnant with her but they didn't take a step further as well to investigate what was wrong with her. Um, when she was seven months she had the first pneumonia and again it was just uh, treated normally as um, um, any person who has pneumonia, she was on antibiotics and uh, she got better. But when she was 12 months again, the pneumonia came back and this time it was aggressive, very aggressive and um, such that her left lung collapsed. And uh, that's when we knew she was 14 months that she has uh, sickle cell disease. My son, um, he just was really weak. That was, he was at 14 months at the time. He just turned one and I took him into the hospital. I was living in Asia at the time and no one seemed to know what was wrong with him. And they just gave him a blood transfusion and at the end of the day, sent me home. But in a few weeks, he got sick again and he was really pale, he could hardly stand. And then they ran more tests and this time they said he had sickle cell anemia. I disputed that and told them it was impossible because I knew I was a carrier, but my husband wasn't. And it was after then um, we realized that the results my husband had, his genotype test was actually wrong. And when he did it again, we found out that he was a, indeed a carrier. And yes, so that's how my story started. Um, I had my daughter when she, she, when she was nine months old, she got sick. So we took her to the hospital and then from there they did series of tests. They couldn't find out what was wrong with her and then they came ask, asking me um, if I have sickle cell traits. So I said yes. So and then they did the test and then they found out that she's got the disease. It was very hard for me because at that time I was three, month, um, three months pregnant with my son. And um, so and my daughter was very, very ill. So it's been difficult because I have two of them that has the condition. It was really tough because I knew nothing about sickle cell anemia. So at this point, I started doing a lot of reading and research to know more about it and how I could help him and the best way to take care of him. And the more I read about it, the sadder I got because I read all kinds of things. And there was very little information out there for me to even know who to associate with and what else to do. And eventually, um, moving back home, 
he had to be in hospital every three months getting blood transfusions, which was really bad for him because his iron levels spiked. And then he had trouble in school because he had to be away from school almost half the time. So, yes, but now he's on hydroxyurea, which helps him a lot. And he's been managed, he's okay. These days, really, sickle cell is not a death sentence that is used to, people used to call it a long time ago. There's different managements and um, so that's where we are right now. I'm trying to just, um, you know, raise awareness for anybody who's, firstly, if you know that you're at risk, and being at risk is for people who are really, um, if you know, like your family has got, uh, if they've got sickle cell in the family, or if you just feel like you're, there's some countries, especially from African backgrounds and the Mediterranean backgrounds, we are at risk if you can just do a simple blood test to know that you, you are potentially uh, have either the trait or maybe you do have the, the condition. But if you have the trait, it's up to you also having your partner tested and if your child can also be at risk. And from there on, that's when you know if you've got a child who's got sickle cell, there's so many uh, good management that's around in, the, in this day and age. The hospital has been great. I've been with the Royal Children's Hospital for about a year now, a little over a year, and it's been great for two years. All he was doing was getting checkups. There was no crisis of any sort. And you get a lot of support when you come in. And especially for us, when I brought him in, um, he had a crisis sometime last year. The hospital staff was excellent. They did all they could to make him comfortable. And yeah, it was, it was okay. It was good. So my advice to them is that they should just sum up courage and then they should, um, you know, give, um, always make sure that they don't miss out on hospital appointments because it's very important and helping the kids to take their drugs and be strong for them because all will go well. Well, just like any other condition, um, finding out as a parent that your child has something um, a condition where you can't help him or her it's really tough and for the first couple of years i was really down i cried every day i was so depressed and because there's actually nothing you can do when that pain comes in but if you have a child who has this condition or who you suspect has any condition all you can do is just learn more about it and give it your all just give it your best shot to help that child and the most important is just to pray because at the end of the day there's only so much you can do as a human being but yeah when you commit the child to God that's he takes care of the child. Well, yes, mo most people from African backgrounds, especially, uh, there's this a story about uh, places where the, we've got uh, uh, malaria. Uh, so places that we, we have uh, potential of having malaria and um, Mediterranean countries, uh, those are the places that uh, sickle cell is very common. Well, we are fortunate because we are in Australia, all our costs are covered by Medicare. We do buy antibiotics, but again, because we are here, she, we buy the medication on concession. Um, so yeah, most of the costs are uh, covered by Medicare. So um, I have a sickle cell page which, which at the moment uh, we may change this name. It's called uh, Palo Joy uh, Sickle Cell Journey. Uh, I'm trying to bring uh, the ladies Rose, uh, Titi and Fatima together because we all share the same story. Uh, we sort of change the name and uh, raise awareness and try to bring in as many people as possible to just tell you know, the community of what sickle cell is and try to enforce change because uh, sickle cell has been around for over 100 years now. We don't have a proper drug uh, that's really uh, sickle cell specific. So we're trying to enforce change and just see maybe one day, it can be in this country, 
where we have either a cure or we have something uh, that's sickle cell specific. Right now, uh, the most common way of getting cured uh, from sickle cell is having a bone marrow transplant, but the transplant itself is very risky and uh, it's, it's something that needs um, uh, you know, people to talk about. You need to know whether you've got a, a match to donate the bone marrow and all sorts. But really, uh, we don't have a drug that's really sickle cell specific for you to get a, to, to get a cure. So right now it's the four of us, uh, there's Titi, uh, uh, Rose and Fatima, and we're hoping, it's, it's in the very early stages, we're hoping to, to come up with, with something and uh, just see how we can move from here and hopefully by this time next year you'll be hearing from us of the things that we'll try to do just in the community. And one thing I should point out is that we, despite talking about sickle cell, we also just want to raise awareness to say we, we people from the African backgrounds can donate blood. Uh, all our kids uh, in one or the other, my child gets uh, blood every four weeks. I, I think one of uh, the girls also, the other son, uh, the daughter gets blood every four weeks. Just tr trying to encourage everyone as well to do your part, if I can call it that way, to donate blood. Uh, I would want people to, to, to join us, but also uh, take that first step, really. Um, I keep emphasizing this on the, on the Facebook page, but it's, it's really important. Don't uh, be caught out like how I was or how the other girls were caught out. Do a history, like know your health history. It's really important. It's not just about sickle cell. It can be things like diabetes or anything or, or heart conditions. You just know your health history. It's important, and if you know that, you, you have a trait um, and potentially if you meet a partner, if you come from the risk country as well, it doesn't mean that you won't get married or you won't have kids, but it just means that you are aware and know that you're going to put the steps forward to ensure that if your child, unfortunately, like what happened to our child has the disease, you put steps forward to, to actually know that you can manage the disease. June is, um, on 19th June is World Sickle Cell Day, that's where we raise more awareness and that September is a wellness month. So the month of September, we talk about uh, sickle cell every day, but also want to shout out um, Anthea. Anthea is a consultant at Royal Children's Hospital, who's uh, being like a member of the family. All the ladies, is, uh, Anthea is a consultant that we see. She's a very good hospital, and the team in the medical, the medical team, they are very good to, to every one of us, and we are thankful to the Royal Children's Hospital. Our kind of background, um you hide medical conditions, you're not supposed to expose it. Yeah. And that way you just suffer alone. Mm. Um, like for my case, I, I, I had no one to talk to, but mm. when you are in a group of people who have similar struggles with you, it makes it a whole lot easier because they understand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, I'm sort of a kind of a reserved person. When something is happening to me, I just deal with it like, I'll just think and think and think mm. about it, but for um, now I'm, I'm happy because we are all together yeah. and we can talk about it. And I'm, I know that I'm not alone in it. Yeah, there exactly. are other families and mothers mm. who are going through the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with all of these um, beautiful ladies. Um, I suppose um, now we are able to um, more encourage now that I've got three other um, women yeah. uh, to three support sisters. me. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this just gives me uh, the privilege and the confidence to sort of share my um, hospital experience and how I manage with my child and um, other people can learn from it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks, Aggie. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks everyone. We should have done this sooner. Seriously, <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should have done this sooner. Yeah.